the belief that you don't need to take control of your financial future, that the big thinkers will do it for you. They will not do it for you. They will do it to you. Gold and silver investors need to take the lessons from Silicon Valley Bank and the other banks as a reminder that we need to take being our own bank to the next level. This isn't about life insurance policies or affinity banking. This is about a much more fundamental approach to being your own bank and reducing your third party risk. I, like many other stackers, have used being my own bank as rationale for stacking. In reality, what Silicon Valley Bank and others have revealed to me is that it's time that we really get serious about this. And I believe this video will help you get started. Silicon Valley and the others have consumed a lot of my thoughts over the last few weeks because of how it really exposed the flaws of our banking system. More and more, I keep coming back to the same question. Why do we even need banks? And that's where my first moment of clarity happened. From the most part, banks really haven't changed much since their original exception. Yes, yeah, so they're modernized, but have they really changed from being a place where people put their money for safekeeping and where we go for loans? At the same time, the complexity of our lives have changed infinitely. While banks have their issues, maybe just maybe the issue is with us and how we use the bank. Listen to my Uncle Rick Rule say it. Individual depositors and investors and borrowers need to understand the political nature of these organizations. Understand that they aren't actually set up to protect the consumer. Uh, they are set up around a set of evolving political criteria. And consumer protection is the obligation of the consumer. Well, I think it's a risk. I don't think it's anything like the biggest risk that customers face, which is, of course, their own lethargy and their own stupidity. It's fun to focus on risks that don't require any response from ourselves. It's fun to blame the big thinkers for all the systemic catastrophe in the U.S. economy. But the biggest risks that investors face are themselves. I see this kind of like using a manual can opener. Most of us have learned how to use it this way. And we've spent most of our lives having the lid fall into our soup or trying not to get cut to death with the razor edge. But if we use that same can opener and just rotate it 90 degrees, we find that not only is it easier, it's safer and more sanitary to open a can. I'm going to submit to you that one of the lessons that we should learn from these recent bank failures are also about us, that there are things we need to change. And maybe the way we were taught to use banks is just as wrong as the way we were taught to use can openers. I would argue that it's time to do things differently and truly embrace this idea of being our own bank. Don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to say down with all the banks so that we don't need banks. We need a place to receive our paychecks and transfers and a way to conduct commerce, et cetera, et cetera. They are absolutely a necessity for modern living, but we have to remember that they are also a necessary evil of modern living. For a quick moment, let's just focus on one aspect of our relationship with banks. Let's say you have a friend. We're going to call him Trustworthy Tom. We're going to call him that because he's so trustworthy. And before you go on a month-long African safari, you ask him to hold and guard your 40 ounces of gold because he's Trustworthy Tom. And he has an impenetrable safe and a house with guard dogs and lasers and moats, everything. You imagine that he's got it. So while you're gone, Tom keeps your metals safe, but he also makes 400 ounces worth of loans against your 40 ounces of gold, which leaves him with an incredible profit. Now he didn't ask you, he just did it on his own. And when you return, you then find out that he's made 400 ounces worth of loans off of your original gold stack. And as a thank you and a form of profit sharing, he gives you a Kennedy half dollar and not even one of the 90% ones. I'm talking about the 40% Kennedy coins. How would you really feel about this situation? How would you feel about trustworthy Tom? I mean, I imagine you would never want him to watch your goal for you ever again, but isn't that exactly what we let the banks do to us? Why do we even need them? And the issue is the way in which we've used them is the problem. Why do people do this? Sloth, lethargy, the ignorance born of 40 years of benign economic climate. Uh, it is your choice. <laughs> it's under your control whether you allow the misapplied lessons of the last 40 years to constrain your net worth and your living standards in the next 10. I need to let you all know how amazing you are and how much I value and appreciate everyone that makes up Stackers University. March 8, 2022 seems like yesterday, and I would have never imagined that a year into this, we would be 5,000 students strong. Yeah. Just a few days ago, we officially hit 5,000 subscribers. And while the number is significant, the way we got to 5,000 is what makes me proud. 
We did it organically. We did it because you believe in what we preach and practice here at Stackers. There are easier ways to get to 5,000 on YouTube, but we stuck to our guns about being an educational channel that strives to make you a better investor and hopefully a better person along the way. Thank you for helping me make my dream a reality, and I hope we will continue to help you make your financial dreams a reality. Now, hit that stupid like button for me, because I promised Princess Stacker that if I got 500 likes on this video, she would get a $100 shopping spree. So don't you let a little nine-year-old girl down. She needs your likes for a shopping spree. Thank you again, everyone. Remember what Rick Rule just said? They won't do it for you. They will do it to you. And the way he said that made that very clear to me that I don't want them doing any of that, whatever it is, to me. Which is why the, this day and age, we have to take being our own bank seriously. And it starts with the bank CEO. Have you ever wanted to be a CEO? I mean, think about it. Doesn't it sound pretty cool? What if I told you that Princess Stacker gave me a magic wand, which allows me to turn every viewer into a CEO, and poof, just like that, you are now the CEO of a small community bank. I know, I know being a bank CEO isn't all that popular right now, but work with me here, as you are now the CEO of, insert your name, bank. As the CEO of Dr. Stacker's bank, from this day forward, I have to take control and runs Dr. Stacker Bank. And yes, this comes with its own set of risks and responsibilities, but I need to run it like a CEO. Such as I need to be responsible for all the decisions that are made by my bank, how my bank spends money, securely stores and manages our assets, its debts, its liabilities, and everything that comes with it. And don't forget all those employees. It means you need to take control of your financial asset and manage them in a way that provides security, privacy, and control. But either you're gonna do it or someone else is gonna do it to you. I mean, do it for you. And just in case you haven't caught on to this analogy, your life is this bank and your finances are how you run your bank or how you run your life. Starting today, you're going to be the best CEO ever. You're going to care about your employees, AKA your dollars that you make, and you're going to take great care in how you use those employees. And you'll be such a great CEO and employer that your employees are all gonna to wanna to go out and bring back more employees, which will only allow your bank to grow. So as a CEO, what does this really mean? As I've hinted to, it means being responsible for your financial life and not turning it over to a physical bank, a sales broker who is supposed to be smarter than you. The joke is they call them brokers because usually they're broker than you are. Next, it means spending more time on your finances and learning about finances than you do watching TV. You no longer will rely on other banks or other institutions to transact for you. You may have to have an account with Bank of America or whomever as a necessary evil, but you will no longer allow your employees, your dollars, to work in their banks for free. Next, you're gonna control your own financial destiny and assets by being responsible for managing and securing them, be it precious metals, be it your emergency fund, buying bonds directly from the treasury and not from banks, using brokerage accounts that pay high interest on your funds and using products like money market accounts and CDs and bonds, etc. Next, you're gonna have a very keen eye on maintaining liquidity in the form of cash and precious metals that can be easily converted into cash. We saw what happens when a bank lacks liquidity. In addition to utilizing company provided retirement products and those kind of things, you're gonna invest your additional funds in companies and sectors and things that you know and understand. You are going to truly be your own investor. You're gonna keep a tight balance sheet that actually balances every month in the green, meaning you are going to spend less than you make. And what is not spent is going to be reinvested back into your bank, be it in more metals, in a cash saving fund, or in other investments. And that leads me to the final piece, is you're gonna work on building your own Stacker's Wealth Pyramid. We showed you this before, we covered it in a previous video, I'll link to that at the end for those that need a refresher. Why is this so important? Because when you have greater control and you accept responsibility for your financial well-being, and you now are in the driver's seat, not sitting in the passenger seat or the back seat going wherever the driver takes you. This ain't an Uber, folks. This is your life. I need you behind that steering wheel 
controlling this vehicle and where it goes. It also protects you from bad actors outside of your control. I can't be responsible or know what the heck Bernie Madoff was doing or the CEO of Silicon Valley Bank or whomever, but I can be responsible for myself and where I put my money, the amount of effort I put into learning as Rick Rule referenced in one of the clips. And then it gives you greater economic stability. You're not at the mercy of a bank. You're gonna be in control, total control and it's gonna give you greater stability in your life. I'm not gonna lie. This is in fact a great deal of work and it will require a lot of your time and attention. But again, this is your financial life we're talking about and you need to be the CEO, the person in charge. I understand that it may feel scary and even risky, but the real risk is when we do not fulfill our responsibility as the CEO of our lives. The real risk is when we don't put in the time and effort into learning how to be the best CEO, or as my uncle Rick Rule puts it, things are probably okay. It's up to the customer to save himself or herself. It's not up to the FDIC, certainly not up to Congress. I do not believe that the level of systemic risk in the American banking industry as a whole is something that need necessarily concern consumers. I think the biggest risk to consumers is conveniently located to the left of their right ear and to the right of their left ear. Uh, it amuses me that a consumer might do three or four hours of research before he or she bought a $400 winter coat, but they'll put $250,000 on deposit with an insolvent bank without doing any research whatsoever. You follow me? I don't think that the I don't think that the risk is dramatic and systemic. I think it's individual. My hope is that you don't see these recent bank failures as another example of the system bailing out their banking friends. Instead, I want you to see it as the last straw and the last time you will leave your financial future to someone else. We need to take the concept of being our own bank and expand it beyond simply holding metals and holding our wealth outside the system. We need to create our own banking system for our lives. Congratulations, you've already taken the first step. Now, let's really build on being your own bank, starting with how you handle your finances and build your wealth with you as the CEO and architect behind it all. I want you to have a bank that the next time you have to buy a car, you truly can be your own bank, finance yourself and pay yourself back with interest. As stackers of precious metals, we are already well suited to be our own bank, not only because of the metals, but because of what being a stacker teaches us about money and being physically responsible, about being the CEO of your bank. In the comments section, if you're truly ready to accept responsibility and take on the challenge, simply type BYOB or type CEO to let everyone know. Also, how has stacking taught or prepared you to be your own financial CEO? What are some of the best lessons you've learned from stacking? Or put a big old A plus in the grade book because everyone needs to know that you're my A plus students. If you wanna learn more about the Stacking Well Pyramid, click on this link right above here at the top. Don't forget to hit that like button as Princess Stacker is counting on you for a shopping spree. Always stack smarter, never stop learning.